is the master in the same field in which you did your uh, undergraduate dissertation? Yes, it is. So um, I'm doing both my um, master's thesis um, and I did my dissertation thesis in the field of natural language processing. And um, it's actually quite cool because um, I kind of, I really enjoyed linguistics in high school. I went to some like linguistics Olympiads, which involve logical thinking, but also analyzing languages. I really like lang learning languages. I speak three languages and I'm currently um, taking classes in the fourth one and so on. So I always loved linguistics, but I also liked technology and I decided that I really want to study a STEM subject. So I took up um, computer science at university and then we had some subjects, um, specifically a natural language processing subject in second year, completely convinced me that I really like kind of that combination of linguistics and the computer science approach to it. And um, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. And I decided that that's probably something I like, um, I would like to specialize in. And I think it's also a really nice thing to be able to get kind of like an introduction to so many different fields um, of computer science because we had um, subjects in first and second year in a really a variety of um, different topics and that's how I discovered my um, passion for NLP um, because before coming to university NLP means um, natural language processing um, before coming to university I didn't know what my favorite parts of computer science were I was quite excited about cryptography and I still am, but I found that natural language processing is just something that I think is the coolest thing at the moment. So <laughs> I lost you. You could have been my PhD student. <laughs> well, so yeah. Um, <laughs> you combine the two things. So natural language processing uh, and uh, um, this is now the, something that's uh, in the news every day with the release uh, a couple of months ago of this uh, chat yeah. GPT. So you're an expert in this field. <laughs> Would you tell us something about if some of our younger viewers think, yeah, yeah, well, everybody who applies here mm -hmm. says I want to do artificial intelligence for the past few years. Everybody wanted to do artificial intelligence. Well, now it's, it's really uh, center stage uh, mm -hmm. and people are seeing things that even, even I personally uh, I must admit, was surprised in seeing the capabilities of this chat GPT, which yeah. were beyond where I thought the state of the art was. So what what's the field like? Where is this going to take us? Is this the end of the world? Is this great? <laughs> I think it's not the end of the world. Um, actually, chat GPT is just amazing at some things, but not that good at some other things. For example, it's really good at summarizing and reproducing information. It's, you can ask it to write a code to, um, I don't know, create a picture of a, car, a cow bouncing around your computer screen and it will do it flawlessly in a few matter of seconds. You can ask it to write poems about random topics. It will do it really well. Um, sometimes I started using it instead of Stack Overflow because it really responds well to um, kind of like if you have questions about programming or um, errors, it will give you really good advice. So it's great. At what does it mean if you have questions about errors? Um, basically, if I am coding, I have a bug, there is an error that I don't know what it means. Normally, I would just search, um, Google it, search um, the top entry on Stack Overflow, which is a website that programmers use um, usually for getting advice on how to debug things. and. Um, then try to resolve it from, via that. But I can just write a question to the chatbot, ChatGPT, and it will usually give me advice that's just as good as Stack Overflow with slightly less time spent searching for it. So it's actually crazy. Um, and it also um, is really good at um, responding to questions about anything, giving lists of things to think about um, if you're trying to organize an event and you ask it what should i make sure that um, i take care of it will still give good advice so it's really good at reproducing things that you could find on the internet otherwise with more effort but um it's sometimes not as good as like answering trick questions or um maybe like thinking in 
new ways, it's still mostly just kind of a really good summarization tool of the data I was trained on. So I feel like it's not going to like end the world just yet. Um, it, I mean, okay, it's good at some things like literally we tried to make it um, solve exam questions from last year and it did scarily well on some subjects. Um, but as soon as you come to subjects where there are no like right, wrong answers, and maybe there is a more specific scenario that wouldn't really appear on the internet just yet, then it doesn't do that well. And um, it also sometimes breaks, um, kind of like gives errors or refuses to answer questions when it shouldn't have. So um, I feel like I'm not yet scared of it. Um, I don't think AI is going to like, um, take over the humanity or whatever anytime that soon. But we will need to reconsider some things. For example, open book exams are very different if you can use ChatGPT, which is just really good at sometimes solving some things. Like, for example, we um, tried it on some security or, or cryptography questions. And um, because uh, there are like some algorithms for solving ciphers um, that are just um, that exist in the internet in abundance. It was able to reproduce that. So I think that like the way professors set questions and so on will have to change if students have access to ChatGPT. So um, there's a million things that <laughs> we could talk about this year, which are very interesting and very topical. And I'm also I'm releasing a, another video today that I. I filmed this week about uh, uh, chat GPT and mm -hmm. cheating because someone asked me a question oh, on really? the channel. Okay. Uh, do you think that the use of chat GPT by students uh, should be construed as cheating or not? Uh, and I and I really want to get back to that. Uh, that uh, the question came out uh, less than a month after chat GPT was mm -hmm. uh, released, but I had lecturing and supervisions organizing workshops. So it took me a while to get back to that uh, question. And in the meantime, ChatGPT really exploded in a, yeah. a newspaper article every day yeah, and so on yeah. and so on. Everyone's so. using it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, th there's lots of interesting stuff to talk about in here, which you also raised. Um, and for example, in preparing that video, I tried ChatGPT on my own, some of my own exam questions, things that were asking for uh, bookwork stuff mm -hmm. were answered perfectly. Um, some other things where I said, you know, apply the knowledge to this particular problem were answered surprisingly well compared to what I expected it would do. Mm -hmm. uh, I could find uh, um, factual error in some things. Where, you know, it was one of the things where the answer was a number, so you had to give mm -hmm. the right number. And he, he gave a very convincing explanation why the answer should be uh, you know, C1 equals 1 and, and C2 equals mm -hmm. 0 0.5. But it was wrong because C1 should have also yeah. been 0 0.5. And and it sounds all plausible and great. And, you know, you read and most of it looks good, but actually it's a mistake. Uh, and how, if you're relying on this rather than going on Stack Overflow, how do you figure out when it's giving you the right advice and when it's actually wrong, but it sounds really right mm -hmm. and righteous about it? Yeah, OK, that's true. ChatGPT is really good at confidently stating things, whether it's right or not. <laughs> and um, when I say I use it instead of Stack Overflow, I mean more like when I need, I don't know, advice on how to quickly implement some, I don't know, um, a pipeline for a particular type of data processing or something. I can just run whatever ChatGPT suggests. And if every line, if I understand every line, and it makes sense, then it's okay because it's more like I use it to for it to give me the right commands I should use, but then I would still verify that they do what I what I would expect them to do. So I think it's more of a tool to gather the appropriate um, functions, and then I can still decide whether to use them and whether they are appropriate. Uh, they're they are useful in my actual in my context so um i wouldn't just blindly use it because i don't think it's actually that reliable um but yes i do think that um it's a really useful tool but we need to be careful so especially if it's not something you can test as in run the code and see if it does exactly what we wanted it to do um, then i would not 
trust it that much. Um, for example, I did some experimenting with ChatGPT and um, sometimes it really confidently states that something is correct, even if it's not. But sometimes just because it's a tool primarily um, meant to mimic a conversation, it's a chatbot. Um, it can also sometimes state something that's correct. And then if you tell it it's wrong and tell it what is correct, sometimes it will retract and say, you are right, This is um, your answer is correct or whatever, because it was trained on kind of like conversational data. And in a conversation, if you tell someone that they are wrong, sometimes quite often they will like retract, say, okay, yes, um, I'm wrong. And ChatGPT does that even if it's right, because that's kind of the most likely response. And it was, it's trained in a way that it gives the most likely response. So you can also do it the other way around where you literally trick it into believing it was wrong when it wasn't. So browbeating <laughs> GPT. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, we need to take everything it says with a grain of salt. Um, so if, if chat GPT, I don't know if you've done all these experiments, if chat GPT gives you the right answer on something and you say, no, 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 I'm sorry, that's wrong. And say, okay, okay, yeah, I'm wrong, sorry. <laughs> the next time that someone asks this, will it remember what you taught it? Um, I don't think so, because basically it's just trained on like some internet data before 2021 or something like that. And um, I don't think that like you telling it something modifies the... Um, so you start from a clean slate when he has a conversation with someone else. Yes, it doesn't, I, I believe it doesn't that it doesn't require from the interaction. Yes, so you can't feed it a lot of wrong information that then everyone else would um, be exposed to. Um, well, I, I would be somewhat surprised if now that you know they've explosively grown, you know, for a million users in the first five days, a hundred million users <laughs> in, in less than two months, and so on. I'd be surprised if they didn't milk the conversations that they're having with those test users now for something. I mean, of course, they will need to vet it because people could do it on mm. purpose to feed it yeah. rubbish. Uh, but I'm sure that they will not throw that data away. Yeah, no, I'm sure they won't. And the fact, like the reason why they released it to the general public is so that they can get user data and so on. So I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do with it. I would expect them to use it in a way or maybe for like next versions. But I I don't know, but I hope that they will have a lot of checks implemented in place yeah. that I can't just like teach it something wrong right now and the next versions will then have that. It's, it's also the case, to be honest, that the way it's been offered to the public, the public just asks the question rather than teach it anything. So there's, there's a lot less to for it to learn from mm. this than there is from trolling the, yeah. the the internet because it's not like the user is giving it factual information. The user is asking for stuff and maybe the user can say, well, I, I like it or I don't like it, but they're not really yeah. providing new, new stuff. So is any of the stuff that you have done in natural language processing uh, going towards this, uh, you know, generating something that looks like, in, in some way looks to an untrained person like a, a human uh, <laughs> emulated by a machine? Um, not exactly. Is it, um, actually, my um, bachelor's thesis was also in question answering, but it was in solving simple math word problems. So like a problem that would be given to um, kids in fourth grade where it would say, okay, this person has seven bananas, this person has eight more bananas than the first person, like how many do they have together or something like that. And actually, um, both from reading the literature and from my work, I realized that like these um, natural language processing tools are really good at kind of extracting information, but they're not as good at reasoning. And that's why even like some versions of um, the kind of like, I don't know, just state of the art um, chatbots or um, natural, like the predecessors of um, chat GPT just maybe like two or three years old. They can't even do long addition. I attended a mini hackathon where basically we just spent a couple hours trying to get the um, 
like an older version of um, ChatGPT basically to do long edition and it was really bad at that it's actually crazy how like we have had algorithms and calculators that can do long edition for like decades and um, those tools are good at answering questions or continuing your sentence but as soon as it comes to maths logical reasoning and so on they're not as good um, because it's much more difficult to teach them that um, it's not just extracting information but it's kind of like following a chain of thought that is not as simple to implement because the point of reasoning is that it's kind of like a bit different every time and you need to come up with some ideas so um, basically in that sense I worked on something that's not that um, advanced just yet in the um, even like the state of the art um, math word problem solvers are not um, anywhere close to human success rates and then this year um, my dissertation is more on like analyzing a concept called um, basic level categories which is um, a linguistic theory that models um, kind of like how we choose words to use and which words are more common to use than others and those words might correspond to the words that give the most information to the person we're talking to or the words that are um, so useful that children will learn it first and it's this year my thesis is more about taking a linguistic a theory that has existed for 30 years and um, going at it from a computer science approach and verifying it computationally um, and kind of like just making sure to that um, I am kind of like formulating things more um, clearly and not just stating the observations but like proving things from a more um, structured perspective so none of the things are like you know, um, none of my um, thesis has been um, imitating humans or like going, getting to that stage of um, conscience, but um, I still think it's like important things to um, research and look into because um, it's good for understanding like human cognition and so on. Human and um, in parallel computer cognition so if um, if one tries to reproduce uh, thought processes in an algorithmic way does this give us insights into how humans think or is this just i mean i'm reproducing it but actually the two things are done in totally different way the same way that uh, uh, in the way that a submarine goes through water is not the same as a fish mm. No, I think they can like feed into each other. So um, there is ongoing um, scientific research that I'm, I think it's quite exciting about kind of like it's called bridging AI and neuroscience where scientists kind of like see how human participants do things, uh, human um, yeah, uh, volunteers think and um, approach tasks and they take brain scans ask them for like the steps of their thinking and then they try to feed that into the machine learning algorithms to see if kind of like imitating human thought processes would actually improve the algorithms and in the other direction the algorithms can help um, humans with like some steps that, um, with the parts of cognition that they are better at such as information extraction and reproduction and so on so um, I think that it's cool because we can learn from the algorithms and they can learn from us